Welcome to Kids Got Safe Movement, making sure our kids are safe on the internet. My name is Key Ellis. I am a technologist, teacher, and entrepreneur. Welcome to our first edition of Kids Got Safe Movement. We're, we'll be discussing social media. A little bit about myself. I am a technologist. I've been in technology for over 20 years. I've been an after school teacher for the past six years, teaching children how to build websites, how to be safe on the internet, and how to code. And I am an, also an entrepreneur. I am the author of a product called Kids Got Web that teaches kids how to build a website and be safe on the internet. Welcome, and thank you for joining me this evening. A little bit of introduction. What is internet safety? Protecting your kids from the dangers, the perils of the internet. There's so much going on out nowadays in regards to the internet. Years ago, you'd send your child outside to play. Now, the playground is the internet. And the internet is not like going outdoors. There's a lot more um, things that are accessible at a child's fingertips than it was just simply going outdoors. Helping our kids to make wise choices. If you're aware that your children are doing certain things, see, looking at challenges, um, then it's a good time to have that conversation with them in reference to why they shouldn't eat a Tide Pod. Creating parent awareness, which is what this is all about, creating a parent awareness. The more you're aware of the things your children probably already are aware of, the better equipped you'll be to be able to have that conversation or put safety measures in place for your child to be safe on the internet. Parent concerns with internet safety, social media, which is our topic today. We're going to talk about TikTok, Facebook, Snapchat, YouTube, and Instagram. All social media sites that children access. So what is TikTok? TikTok is a free app that allows you to watch, share, and um, create videos. Children think it's a way to gain popularity and instant fame. But one thing about TikTok, although it may be um, humorous for us adults to watch it, there are numerous people uploading different videos at any given time about all types of topics. And so if you have someone, you know, there's so many different um, things that are going on on TikTok to where if you have someone that's maybe eight years old listening to someone that's 30 that's put something that may be inappropriate up there, maybe it's sexual content, maybe it's cursing because of, um, of the trends, um, that may not necessarily be appropriate for a younger child to see. Um, some of the trends that are going on with TikTok, the challenges. Uh, we talked a little bit about those during our Internet Safety for Kids topic, and we're going to touch on that again um, next month, and I'll cover that a little later. And music. You know, in a lot of the New Age songs, um, there is cursing. There's a lot of things that are going on there, and that may not necessarily be age appropriate. So let's talk a little bit about the age limit for TikTok. They say 18 and above. Um, on Common Sense Media, um, they took a poll with parents, and they say about 16 and above. Well, if that is the case, there may be things on there that an eight-year-old or a nine-year-old, it's not appropriate for them to watch. But if you go on TikTok, you're definitely going to see a lot of the children under the age of 13 creating videos. And TikTok doesn't remove those videos. So there are a lot of children that are still accessing this site. My goal is here to simply make you aware that the site exists. Facebook. Facebook is something that we all as adults, a lot of adults, we um, enjoy Facebook. But from a child's perspective, adults are able to friend um, the child um, and they may not be known to the family. OK, it's impossible to feel to the age on Facebook. There isn't a kiddie version, if you will. And cyberbullying is at an all time high. And it happens through sites like Facebook in regards to your child being bullied through an online tool. Snapchat. Snapchat is a very interesting one. One of the biggest things with Snapchat, there are a lot of inappropriate videos on Snapchat. Tons of inappropriate videos on Snapchat. 
Um, but here's the scary thing about Snapchat. Snapchat automatically deletes these videos. So you as a parent or an educator, you can't go on the child's account and find out maybe if the child has posted something inappropriate or if they've seen something inappropriate because the videos are automatically deleting. So again, the goal here is to make you aware in reference to what some of these tools um, are doing. YouTube. Now YouTube is a place where people can upload videos. <clears throat> I think we've all seen YouTube. We've been on YouTube. But to a kid, it's like the biggest playground in the world. Whatever comes to their mind, they can do on YouTube or they can find out how. They can make guns, bombs, they can, anything you can think of that you want to do on YouTube. They can learn about sex, violence. They can see some of the most glorious things, glorious things on Facebook, drugs, challenges. All these things exist on YouTube, and it's at a child's fingertips to be able to type it in. Yes, YouTube has a kid version, um, but there are still ways for the child to be able to access um, the, regular, the regular version of YouTube. Instagram is another one of being able to share videos and photos. And again, children are exposed to guns, sex, violence, and challenges. All these um, things that are not necessarily appropriate for a child to be exposed to. So my goal is to get folks to understand open communication is really key in regards to um, having that conversation with your child as far as social media is concerned. Talking to your child about what is their school schedule, how did they their day go, um, who are their friends, talk to them in reference to the social media sites that they're on, um, see how they feel about it, having that open communication with them, um, being able to educate them in regards to some of the dangers that are going on out there. The more you're um, educated, the more you'll educate your child as deemed appropriate. If your child doesn't know anything about challenges or maybe doesn't know about Snapchat, there's no reason for you to introduce that to them. But when the time comes, every parent, every child is different. You'll know when it's time to have that conversation with your child. Peer pressure. Now that's a big one. You know, when I was younger, peer pressure usually happened on a campus, um, on a school playground. Now peer pressure can be happening while you're cooking dinner and your child's on the phone. There's a whole concept of being able to have a, ch um, a chat room and you can have 20 kids connected in your living room from your child's cell phone. And there are a lot of things that can happen in, in that um, in dealing with that child as far as especially dealing with peer pressure. And numero uno is you as a parent, educator, stand up to date in regards to what's going on out here with the kids. Um, learning the social media, being aware of the trends that are going on. Definitely stand up to date. And that is one of the things that kids got safe movement is all about ensuring that you stay up to date in regards to what is going on out here um, on the internet. I understand that parents, educators are super busy. So here it is on every fourth of the month. Our goal is to bring you the information, the latest and greatest in reference to what's going on out here on the internet. We um, spend about 15 minutes together and we talk about exactly what's going on. So again, solution, kids got safe movement, making sure our kids are safe on the internet. Awareness is key. I can't emphasize that enough. Awareness is key. Tell someone today, tell another parent about kids got safe movement and let's together keep our children safe on the internet. Our next webinar is February 27th and we're going to have a deep dive into challenges. These are challenges are where they're challenging your kids to do some of the most bizarre things like eating Tide Pods. Who would want to eat laundry detergent? But it's happening. It is happening. So we want to talk about some of those dangers of challenges. Some are leading children to commit suicide. And so we're going to have a deep dive in regards to challenges. And that is February 27th, which is our next webinar. It's the fourth Thursday of every month from 4.30 to approximately 4 50. If you have any questions, please feel free. Contact me. I'm Key Ellis. It's 510-214-2277. Or you can always contact us at support at lmbsolutions.com. I thank you so much for your time. 
um, today and please join us again next month, the fourth Thursday of the month at 4.30. Um, bring a friend, bring another educator, bring another parent, and let's have that discussion in regards to challenges. Thank you so much.